Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where we are ready to deploy. We still don't have the boar's head with the annihilator though, and we're still well below that 10 million C bill mark. So I think that we're probably going to try to look for something a little bit money making and not necessarily boundary pushing. So let's go ahead and see what we can get done here. The real question is what's available and 2.6 mil? Maybe not the worst. It does have a drop weight limit on it, so probably not. There is this assassination against Comstar. Hmm. Federated Sun's battle, huh? It's 8 skull, so we should be expecting airstrikes at 8 skull. I would really prefer not to have airstrikes. This is a recovery mission here. Really, our options are quite limited. I would prefer something like a capture base or a uh, destroy base. Unfortunately, for us to do that, we would definitely have to be dipping into the higher difficulty, which I don't want to do right now. So I think instead, maybe we just run this recovery as a super, super quick run here. It's no free priority salvage, though. Hmm. Our options are extraordinarily limited. <laughs> There's not much available here. I'm not going to lie. This one should be really quick and easy, in and out. It's not a free priority salvage, but we run it something like this. We still have 28 days in the financial report, so this would mostly be a mission reroll, more than anything. We could run it straight down the middle, since it's no priority salvage, we probably will. And who is our op for again? Lyran Commonwealth, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is not expected to be tremendously challenging. Do we have anybody who has Bullshark affinities other than Paladin? Who does have Bullshark Affinities. Uh, yes, actually, Succubus has Bullshark Affinities. Perfect. And we're not lacking Kodiak anywhere because Kodiak, of course, is still in the simulator. Now, we could bring the Magcap Mark II. And that has been refit to have the HA-20s Enhanced LRM-15s. So I think that we're going to try that out and see how that feels. Probably dropping the Battlemaster temporarily. We'll see how it feels, if it needs additional work. Do we have a Mad Cat Mark II pilot? Let's see here. Tooltip? Tooltip. There we go. Yeah, Rain is a Mad Cat Mark II pilot. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and deploy this. Yeah, we know we have some unused tonnage. Darius thinks that we're weak. He might be right, but we should steamroll this. The real question is, how does the Madcap Mark II perform? Now, what is it intended to do? That's something that we should probably talk about. The Madcap Mark II is not intended to fill the same role as, say, the Mauler. The Mauler's role is huge amounts of damage to targeted locations. In many cases, we're not able to target which location that is, but it does a huge amount of damage to one specific location twice. That's kind of the same role that the Fafnir is in. It does the same sort of thing with the UAC-20s, although it does it four times and it's slightly less, so it spreads out the damage a little bit more. The Madcap Mark II is HA-20s and its LRMs are really more about armor strip. Now, is it going to be better than that, than the... Is it going to be better at that, <laughs> if I can use words, than the Salamander with AX rounds? No, absolutely not. But we'll find out if it has a decent niche. For now, we need to retrieve the de de decryption key and extract safely. That's fine. We don't really need to go through this because I talked through that entire loading screen. So let's go ahead and do this, and we'll see if we have any allies. I'm not really expecting much resistance. The operative's dead. Okay. We can still make the pickup. Okay, so we're not going to be able to pick up the operative, but we can pick up over here. So I think we'll just drop right around here in this cover and on this road. We don't have any allies. Our bonus objective is gone. 
but I am expecting to just absolutely steamroll this and be through this fairly quickly. So first things first, we're going to reserve and let them move first. Roger that. Okay. They're down over here. So we see a summoner, a wolverine, and a mjolnir. And nothing else? How's it going? Nothing else. Okay, well, the Fafnir is going to move up the road over here. No or move towards the road, more like. Commander. The Mad Cat Mark II is also going to move towards the road. Let's do this. So is the Salamander. Let's Running up that Double road. Time. Next round, we may be able to get into LOS, sir. The Mauler is also going to move up that way. Most of our direct fire mechs are going to go that way. Our longbow is going to head up over this way. Of course, it's not direct fire. Let's take a look at hit odds here. 44% on that Wolverine. Wow. Okay. I mean, Wolverines don't have much armor. They're only a medium. 55 tonner. So, yeah. Take that. That does a solid chunk of damage to that Wolverine. Yep. Next up is our Corsair, which of course is an indirect fire mech Understood. for the moment. And we're going to also fire on this Wolverine. Firing. We hit here, but also here. I like it. So this is the unit that we can't see. They're firing on the Salamander. That looked like indirect firing. They're out over here as well. Perhaps a Catapult 2 or something along those lines. The Awesome is going to move up over here. It should bottle. have pretty good hit odds on that Wolverine by this point. 35%. That's not as good as I was hoping, but it'll do. Ah, we do see it over here. It is looks like an archer. Yeah, that's an archer. Excellent. Commander. So the Bull Shark is going to step up. Moving to position. The obvious target remains the Wolverine. Which may or may not be unsteady at this point. No, it is not. Well, now it is. Laser AMS firing that time. Target's taken a critical hit. Interesting. So phase 10, that is going to be that summoner. It jumps and does not fire. Cool. Commander. So our salamander is going to sprint up the road. Roger. That gives us an LOS on the archer. Hit odds aren't perfect because we have no visuals. But this is the only unit that we have any chance at all at. So 33% versus 25 on AX. We are better off firing AX here. Although it's not great any way we slice it. Here we go. Well, we got some armor reduction there. Ready to rock. The longbow will continue to advance. We're going to hit this Wolverine. Hit odds are decent now. Locking off with all weapons. Okay, we took off the arm there. Now the Wolverine moves now. Interesting. Isn't that its damaged arm that's facing us? The left side? Yes. Odd choice. But okay. Aye, aye. The Awesome is going to move up over here. It has direct fire LOS on this archer. Hit odds are probably pretty garbage. They are indeed. We'll take Taking them, the but I'm not expecting much here. We do hit one of the heavy PPCs, surprisingly. Cool. Yeah. So the Corsair is going to continue moving up over here. And we're just going to continue to drop the Thumper on the Wolverine. Aye, aye. Engaging target. Mostly, that ended up hitting the Mjolnir, which we're okay with. Okay. I hear ya. The Mauler is going to sprint its way up. It also gets visuals on, well, not visuals, but it gets LOS on the archer. Odds are low, but we'll pot shot it. We actually hit one of those. That's a little surprising. Now, the Fafnir is obviously going to be out of range here. Its UAC-20s can't shoot that far. Okay, firing on the Salamander. AMS doing a little work there, but the Salamander getting shredded just a slight amount. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit. The Mad Cat Mark II could position here or here. Which of these do we think would be better? Ultimately, I think I'd rather be on the road at this moment. So we're going to move up and fire on this archer. Hit odds are not great, but this is actually kind of what the Mad Cat is designed for here. 
Nice. That was solid. Solid connection on that one. Hopefully, the Mad Cat will continue to perform like that. That was very good. The Bull Shark is going to move up and continue to drop artillery on this Wolverine, which should die soon. We are hearing a laser AMS. I'm not sure what mech that's from. The Summoner jumps, fires on the Salamander, fires with his HA Gauss. That's fine. Oh, you're okay. So next up is going to be the Salamander. The Salamander is going to dip up into this cover, I think. Actually, I have changed my mind. We're going to dip over to here. And we're going to Vigilance because we're not in cover. And we're probably going to get hit by all of these guys. Now, we could fire on the Mjolnir, on the Wolverine, on the Summoner, or on the Archer here. Our hit odds aren't great on any of them. Did we fail our sensor roll, or are we being ECM jammed? ECM jammed. Okay. So, we're... It's the Wolverine that's ECM jamming us. Let's go ahead and fire on the Wolverine with improved rounds and get that eliminated. Sixty percent damage reduction with cover plus bulwark. That's a lot, for sure. He's also running the AMS. So that Wolverine doesn't have very much left. The Mjolnir is going to fire on the Salamander. We knew this was coming, and this is why we braced it. Okay. So that's all well and good. Next up is our Longbow, which will continue to advance over here. We're still going to hit the Wolverine. I want that ECM jamming gone. And there we go. That's what we were looking for. Perfect. So next up, we're going to move up with our Mauler. We're not sprinting, and we're going to fire on, looks like the Archer. I would love to see an elimination here. We'll, we're even going to fire the Light AA Missile Rack, and we'll boost our hit odds with Warlord. If we hit, like, in any of these three locations, the Archer just dies straight up if we hit with the Gaussler Rifle there. And there we go. Beautiful. So the Archer is out of here. There are two left. And one has already yes, fired. Commander. So the awesome is going to move up over here. On the move. Now, we don't have visuals on the summoner, but without the ECM jamming... Actually, we do have visuals. Without the ECM jamming, our hit odds are much, much better. Target confirmed. And he only has 873 armor. Man, those, those stock clan variants, they're just that not very armored. Okay, need? so the Corsair is going to move up over here. Roger. Which of these has the most armor remaining? 775 versus 722. Technically, that's the Mjolnir. So we're going to hit the Mjolnir. Strip off some of that armor. Receiving Beautiful. You. The Fafnir is going to sprint his way forward over here. Now, I'm not expecting a huge amount of hit odds here. Yeah, just the MRM. Engage but we'll go ahead and fire that. Standing by. The Mad Cat will move up to here. And let's see how that H.A. Gauss does in this scenario. This should be pretty good. Plasma cannon explosion. Engine crits, torso destruction. Yeah, that Mad Cat is performing very well so far. I like it. So the Bull Shark is going to step up over here. The Mjolnir is the obvious hit, hit chance here. Or rather, the obvious hit target for our artillery. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Now... This guy's going to fire immediately. Just shooting at the Mauler with the HA Gauss isn't going to be very is useful for them. I'm barely scratched. Yeah, that's not very good at all. Hell yeah. And now they're going to die. The Salamander is going to move in over here. Position confirmed. It's going to fire on the Mjolnir. Are we going to fire AX or are we going to fire Improved? I feel like enough armor has been stripped off of this guy to fire Improved. Yeah, I think we're going to get more internal damage firing improved than AX here. Roger that. Target confirmed. And there we go. So he does indeed die. That is perfect. Next up is going to be the longbow. Only one target remains for the longbow. This is a pretty big overheat. We're going to not fire our enhanced LRM-15s. 
Not bad damage there. The awesome is going to step up, and this could easily kill the summoner here. Affirmative. Yeah, I think he's dead. There we go. Beautiful. Now, we uh, can't relax just yet. I'm going to send the Corsair up to get the package. Understood. The Moving decryption back. key. However, when we hop in there, there we is a possibility of another Lance spawning. And we need to keep that in mind. So for right now, we're going to look to Sink Heat on applicable mechs anyway. Not all of our mechs build heat. But our Fafnir will just move on up over here. We're not yes, too concerned about another Lance coming in at this time. But we have exited combat, and we're just going to run the Corsair up. Everyone else, I'm just going to brace in position right now. Yeah. So is there another Lance? That is the question. We have the key. And that's it. Okay. There was no other Lance. I mean, given the fact that this was a low payment mission, I'm not super shocked about that. Mostly what we wanted to get out of this mission, we got. Like, we took very little damage. We made a decent chunk of money. And are we going to get anything good in terms of salvage? Probably not. Yeah, we took very little damage. Um, in terms of salvage, we get two things to salvage here. An advanced zoom mark two is not bad to grab. I think we'll go ahead and take that. Partial threes are hilarious. I'm not necessarily interested in going for that right now. What else is available? Upper hardened. 10% actuator weight, minus 5% damage taken, weighs 10% of 1 tenth chassis tonnage. Now, is that 5% damage taken over the entire mech, or just in the region that that is placed? I don't know. We're going to grab it. We might experiment with that later. We also got a clan ER medium laser, which we'll keep around. A gauss rifle. We've got four of those. We did get a Harjol 3. That's always funny. Lower melee punch. I guess we'll keep that. We're not really getting in close enough for melee attacks anymore, so we're probably not going to utilize that. Reinforced structure is kind of the opposite of what we want. I'm actually just going to sell it. Basic sensors. We don't care. Spiked Helmet is, I mean, charge damage and injury resistance. Again, though, we're not really getting close enough to melee things. So we'll just call that good for now. There's the occasional melee that we're getting, but by and large, it tends to not be happening. Now, how much damage did we end up taking in that mission? Very little. The Salamander got some damage. The Mauler got some damage. Beyond that, it wasn't very much. So we should be able to get a good amount of repair work done on our Atlas and our Annihilator as we cruise our way through this, hopefully. <laughs> the Salamander took the majority of the damage. The Mauler took a chunk. There were, I think, a smattering of other units that took just tiny amounts of damage. But yeah, 50,000 sea bills, eight days. Go ahead and do that, Yang. And let's take a look here, six and three. Nice. It was just the Salamander and the Mauler. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to tick forward here until those mechs are done, which is right now. We did get some work done on the Boar's Head and Annihilator, but those are not prioritized right now. We can deploy again only 21 days, or rather only 9 days into this month. Like, that's a huge deal. That is a really, really big deal. Let's go ahead and go into our barracks here. There are a couple of mech warriors. Kodiak is not really able aye, to aye. be done right now. But Poet can grab a point of piloting. That'll be Training. perfect. So we'll go ahead and do that. And hopefully we have some better missions. Although I think these might regenerate before we actually choose them. 
because I'm going to be restarting the game and recording tomorrow because it's a little late in the episode to get started on another one of those today, unfortunately. I don't like putting in a cut at 20 minutes. I really prefer going to 25, but here we are. This is the stopping point. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I'll see you all next time where hopefully we'll have some better contracts. That would be nice. <laughs> see you all then.